Okay, so we're gonna make a spiral t-shirt. This t-shirt has been washed and dried, so I pre-shrunk it. Then I soaked it in soda ash for at least 20 minutes. I then spun it out in the washing machine. And now we're going to tie it up for tie dye. And what we're going to make today is just the basic spiral. This is a really great shirt for uh, beginners. It's pretty quick and easy to learn. So I highly recommend, you know, starting here. And once you feel comfortable with this, it gets a lot easier to make different patterns. Um, the shirt is inside out. And when I do my spirals, I like to flip the shirt over and start by spiraling on the back. Now I use a fork. It, it really starts the pattern off easily. You can also do it just by pinching with your fingers. But honestly, sometimes my fingernails are longer and it's just harder to pinch. So the fork comes in really handy. And I learned this by watching other people who've made wonderful YouTube tutorials and it works. You just don't wanna poke real hard through the shirt. You don't wanna put holes in the things that you're making. So I like to start my spirals, you know, sort of in the chest area. So uh, the good indicator is where the armpits are, kind of come right about there. So I'm just gonna start by twisting. And depending upon if you twist up or down, that indicates which direction your spiral is gonna go. And as I begin the twist, I watch my pleats and I want to keep making more pleats because that's going to help give you that pattern as I twist. And you want to try to keep all of the uh, pleats as flat as possible so that each pleat has its own opportunity to be a color. If it's folding over the center of the spiral, then everything kind of gets muddy. And this is a long sleeve youth size t-shirt. And long sleeves can be a little more challenging than a short sleeve shirt. So if you can master a long sleeve, you can do anything. And again, just working on the, uh, the pleats as I go. At this point now, I can take the fork out. And I want to just keep my hand on it to help hold the spiral tight. And I'm just going to work on making pleats as I wrap it around. And the shirt is nice and fresh and damp, and it makes it a lot easier to work with than a dry shirt. Okay. Let's come around over here. And for those of you that have made hundreds of t-shirts, this part's gonna be pretty boring, but this is gonna be a good tutorial for somebody who's maybe making their very first tie-dye shirt ever. You see here, I'm gonna make some more pleats. I just keep working myself around here. Trying to keep it in view. And then uh, for the spirals, I use rubber bands. They're quick, they're easy, they're tried and true. I do use the kite string and the sinew like everybody else in the tie-dye community, but not typically for my uh, spirals. I do reuse my rubber band. That's okay to do. Just make sure that you rinse them really well. So now what you want to do is you want to slide the rubber band under the shirt, trying not to completely disturb the, the shirt. 
You want those folds to stay as tight as you can. And we're gonna just do the basic rainbow spiral. So that comes out to being six pieces of the pie. But if you have to use more rubber bands to keep your shirt together, that's fine. So I'm just sliding, trying anyways, to slide the rubber band under. Which sometimes is just a lot easier said than done. As you can see, I'm struggling a bit here, but we'll get it. Not sure if I mentioned or not, this shirt is 100% cotton. You can use less cotton than 100%, but the colors aren't as vibrant. If you can do 100% cotton, I highly recommend it. So there are the six pieces of the pie, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. However, I'd like to make it a little bit tighter. So I'm just gonna put some more rubber bands on. And I like a particular type of rubber band. Okay, so that didn't take too terribly long. And as I get uh, better, I'll go faster and you will too. Now I just want to show you the other side. See, this looks pretty, mm, I don't know, let me see. Um, eh. When you flip it over, it's nice and flat. So the reason why I start with pattern on the back by flipping the shirt over is because I'm going to dye this one starting on the front side and then if I wanted to add an effect like black to make a spider, I find that if I put it, the black on the flat side, I get better results. I don't know. That's just what I do. So anyways, now we're gonna go take this shirt and start dyeing. So the next step is, is that I'm going to mark off my, my pattern, I guess you could say. I focus on the primary colors first, which would be red, yellow, and blue. In this case, this shirt's going to be more on the pastel side. So I'm using um, pinks and yellows, light blues. But I wanna focus on dyeing with these colors first because they mix with the secondary colors and make better result. If you put too much dye in your spiral center, you end up with kind of a lot of muddy colors. So if you can see right here, this is my center spiral. So I'm just trying to give myself a guide to break that up. So think of uh, pastel colors, so red, Yellow, blue translates to hot pink, baby blue, in, like that. Okay, so now my next color here is gonna be some orange. I'm When I do the dyeing, I'm not gonna bring it all the way up to the center spiral, but just to, oh boy. So this is real life, guys, I'm making a tie dye. As you're going along, you realize, eh, you need a little more. Maybe I should position it over here a little more. It's tie-dye. It's all for fun. So we've got pink, yellow, orange, green. Now I'm doing the green. And over here is going to be the purple. 
And as I start to lay the dies down, I just sort of see how they begin to spread and I sort of play it by ear. But for me personally, I always start with the primary colors. Okay, so let's get dyeing. So my first color I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna take the hot pink. Always give your dyes a nice shake. I focus my dies in the center first before I get them up towards the spiral. And I really make sure to always saturate the sides. As you can see, the color really just starts to spread. I'll put a little up here and I'll let it do its thing while I work back here. So this color that I'm using is from Dharma Trading Company and it's called Hot Pink. It's really pretty when it's washed out. Okay, we'll let that do its thing. I'm gonna pick up the next primary color to me and that's yellow, lemon yellow from Dharma Trading Company. Right now, all the dyes I'm using are for Dar Dharma Trading Company. So far, I've been very pleased. So if you can see there in the center, uh, right here, is where the spiral is. So I'm gonna focus my yellow to kind of meet with the hot pink because it will ultimately make an orange. And again, I, I focus heavy on the back because I know that my colors are going to spread towards the center. And that's a learning curve. I've messed up a lot of shirts by being heavy handed and then everything sort of turns brown in the middle. So I'm just sort of gonna bump it up towards the middle and then bring it back. The good thing about starting with your primary colors is when you overlap the orange and the green and the purple, they blend very well with the primaries. Next, I'm gonna use Robin Eggs Blue, again from Dharma Trading Company. Always give a good shake. And here, guys, did you notice I'm ambidextrous? Started with my left hand and now I'm moving into my right. Really focusing on the center first, just It's going to spread and then I work my way up. Oh, well, that's what happens in tie dye guys. That just jumped across the rubber band and is going to make green, but that's okay because I'm going to add green. So here I go meeting in the middle there. And maybe you can see on camera, <clears throat> the yellow and the blue have mixed and they are definitely starting that green. To be honest, I wish that wouldn't have jumped over on the yellow like that, but we'll see. I think it'll still be fine in the washout. <clears throat> All right. Since we already have started green, let's just go right into green. This is Lime Pop, a very fun pastel color, bright color green. 
Now I'm going to lay that down and I'm gonna go a little bit over the yellow and also over the robin's egg blue. I'm gonna move the tag out of the way just to make sure that I'm getting good dye saturation underneath there as well. I'm Now I'm bringing this color up near the spiral, but I'm not going to push it in there. It'll creep on its own. All right, the next color that we're gonna be using is Soft Orange, also from Dharma Trading Company. And I'm gonna just keep doing the same thing. Really focusing on the back because we know that the colors are gonna spread. And when I bring the orange up, I bring it just to where the yellow and red meet. I don't want to go all the way to the center of my spiral because that's, again, where the colors are going to start to get really muddy. And then last, we're going to go with the lilac the lilac from Dharma Trading. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing with this. I'm gonna focus heavy on the back. Bringing it in towards the center, overlapping the turquoise and the hot pink because they'll blend and make their own pretty color. Trying not to bring it up to the center spiral. Now at this point I have all my colors laid down. I take a look and I feel like the robin's egg blue could use just a little more dye. I still see some uh, white in the t-shirt and also in the strings. So I'm just gonna lay down a little more color. And I'm gonna run it up a little over the purple cause they will blend together. All right, I also would like to add a little more hot pink to this to sort of blend out the large amount of orange that happened here. So I'm hoping that adding just a little more of the hot pink will sort of temper down that orange. I didn't want this to be a big orange shirt. I wanted it to be a more uniform uh, rainbow pattern. Okay. So now this is what I do, and I don't know if everybody does, but I let it sit for, let's say, mm, five or 10 minutes. And then I come back, I check the bottom, see what the saturation is, flip it over, and I'm gonna do it all over again. So we'll be back. All right, so the shirt's been doing its thing for probably 15 or 20 minutes now. I didn't look at the clock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip it over and we're gonna add dye to the other side. And I've been thinking about this while I was out there making lunch. Do I wanna just make it the same pattern or do I wanna offset it 
which I've never done before, and see what happens. And I thought I might just offset it and you and I can go along for the ride together. So what I mean by offset is since I did red here, well, hot pink, I'll do it over here and each one will just be set off. And I think the results could be pretty cool. So you see how the dye has soaked through? That's why I like to let my shirts sit. I'm a little heavy handed with the dye. That way it can sort of absorb, I can flip it and uh, add more dye. So that's just me. Everyone finds their own way. Again, I'm gonna start with a primary color. So I'm gonna start with hot pink. Now here's where the offset is. So you can see I did hot pink right here. I'm gonna offset it one. I can offset it towards the, um, the lilac or I can offset it towards the orange. You just have to sort of decide which way you wanna go. I felt like I wanted to offset it to, to towards the orange. So here I go. And again, I'm gonna to try to somewhat stay away from the center spiral. I don't want it to get too muddy. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before by working with the primary colors first and then adding the secondary colors. Next, I'm gonna use yum, yellow lemon. And I'm gonna skip the yellow. Let's see. Oh, now this is where it gets confusing. So, let's see. Yep, the orange is getting swallowed up. So, uh, changed my mind. I'm just gonna go right in with the soft orange because all the colors are so saturated that it's hard to tell what I'm doing. But this is part of the fun of tie-dye, guys. You just go for it. I'm really not sure if there is a wrong way. I mean, maybe there is. So next to follow in the rainbow pattern of these pastels, I'm gonna put the yellow down. And remember, I'm trying to offset it so that they sort of mix on the other side, giving a, a different effect. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out, so we're along for the ride together. Next, I'm using the Lime Pop. It's somehow just turning out to where my blue is on top of blue, but that's okay. And I know the shirt is way oversaturated because it's just pouring out the bottom. 
into the tray. And finally, we're gonna go in with the lilac. It's dripping thoroughly. I know it's saturated. I'm gonna let this sit just for a couple of minutes. What I do now is I tidy up. I'm gonna get this into a container and I'll show you what I use. I just got these containers at any store that sells containers. And so the shirt's gonna have to batch for 24 to 48 hours. I personally let them sit for 48 hours. I feel like the dye is able to absorb all the way. I can tell that that happens because when I'm doing the rinse out, I don't get a lot of dye running down the sink. I think you're gonna get a brighter shirt, a shirt that's gonna last much longer. So that's what I choose to do. 48 hours, this is going to batch, and then I'm gonna come back and we'll rinse it out, and we'll take a look, and we'll go over how it looks and see what happens. Okay, so it's been 48 hours. Honestly, it's been longer than that. It's been 72 hours because I wasn't having access to the shirt. So we're just gonna give it a rinse out. We're gonna wash it with cold water to start. That's gonna stop the soda ash and um, stop the dyeing process but honestly the dyeing process has already stopped because of how many hours it's been but I, I start with the cold water and then I'm going to warm the water up to a tepid water which is a nice warm water And ultimately, this is going to go into the washing machine on hot water. I honestly do about three cycles on just plain hot water. Then I use a hot water cycle of textile detergent. And then I do a, a mill soft wash with hot water. So there's really no chance of this shirt shrinking from there. And as you can see, because it uh, batched for so many hours, there is very little dye that's running out. But while we're here, why don't we just take the bands off and see what sort of results we have quickly before I put it into the machine. It's always like Christmas morning. I never know what the results are gonna be with any shirt that we produce. We're kind of along for the ride. Now that I've opened the bands, you can see a lot of dye starting to run down. So as I open it, I'm just gonna continue to rinse. Oh, that looks really pretty. It's always exciting. So after I wash it, it's going to look a lot different. Wash it, dry it. So we'll come back after this and uh, we'll see what kind of results we have.
All right, so let's do a quick review of our uh, spiral here. So I think it turned out really pretty. As you can see, it's much different looking now that it's dry. The colors are a lot lighter and they're very vibrant. Uh, so I believe because we did the offset, this is what uh, we're seeing here, how the purple uh, mingles in with the pink versus just being one solid pink stripe, one purple stripe, one yellow. So that's, I believe, what um, the offset has created. I'm pleased with the shirt. In a perfect world, I wouldn't see white. However, I feel like sometimes the white can create a, a contrast so that the colors seem a little more vivid. So I think it turned out great. Overall, I'm really happy with it. So what do you think? If you uh, are enjoying these videos, please subscribe and like. I will continue to upload more tutorials on how to make tie-dye. Thanks for watching.